first thing we're going to do is just go through the operating uh, parameters for your liquid nitrogen doers tanks. Okay, several key features that you have to make sure you're getting. Um, number one, you have to be using a low pressure uh, doers tank, which will typically come with a 22 psi this is valve a, on there. This is a gas valve here. This one you see has a tag on it that says liquid. So that's your liquid connection. That's what we're going to be hooking up to. And then over here, this is your pressure builder valve. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's basically what you want to look for. You got to have a liquid connection. You got to have a pressure builder. That's critical because if you don't have enough pressure and you're doing a freeze and you can't seem to get it cold enough and you have no way of increasing your pressure, then you're you're you know you're kind of uh, in trouble. So you want to be able to control your pressure. Okay. Um, obviously, if we're doing a freeze and we have too much pressure going in to where you're shooting liquid out of the exhaust, then obviously we would shut this pressure builder and then it will automatically, that pressure will drop as we're... So usually what we're doing when we're freezing, we will have this pressure builder valve cracked open. We want to keep this venting because then we know we're right up at that pressure that we want to be at. If this isn't venting at all, then odds are we don't we're not going to be working with enough pressure, so you got to have um, enough pressure. So this is your this is your closed cell foam insulating tape. What we're going to do with this is we're going to we're going to mark on the pipe where the jacket is going to be on the pipe. We're going to put a ring of the tape, the foam tape, around the pipe where the jacket is going to make contact with the pipe wall, and we're also going to line the flat surfaces of the jackets with the foam tape as well, with insulating tape as well. So you'll have closed cell foam, which what's going to give us our seal so that it holds all the liquid nitrogen inside the jacket. Um, and so what we'll get into now is go ahead and have you guys take apart the six inch jacket. Uh, the, way it's, the way it's set up actually, this comes readily available in this, in this uh, size. Basically we're going to cut this right down the middle because that gives us the width that we want for the surfaces on the jacket. And then we'll go onto the pipe wall as well. All right. So go ahead and uh, we've got ratchets here and everything available. But these should just be hand tight so you can loosen that. You can get the four inch jacket out of the way for right now. Put so that on the table. And then we've got scissors here. So we'll go ahead and wait until we get the jacket apart and we'll see how we do that. So Rusty, just take one half and set it, set it down on the floor for us to get it out of the way. Alright, so what we're going to do here, basically we want the tape to come right along this side, yeah, basically an inch, and then right across here, back down and around. So usually what I do is I'll just take the tape and I'll start right there. I'll kind of feed it through here, get a good idea how long it needs to be. Okay, I want to go to about there. So we'll cut it there, scissors right here. Then we'll rip this down the middle and then that'll give us our two end pieces and then you'll just do your two, two straight pieces across to make sure it's making good contact all the way. Try not to get any big bumps or creases. All right, and I'll let you guys do the other one. The other half, just the same way. We'll have our jackets ready Come to go. on, buddy. I did all that work to get in here. And Charlie's old man. There goes the finger. <laughs> Lucky uh, here. Uh, assembly line. Oh, yeah, it's clear down the middle. They almost did it. Oh, I in so we can see what's going on. Alright, so we're just going to mark the pipe where our jacket's going so we know where to put the tape on the ends. So now we've got our mark on the pipe. Put this 
third one. And you're going to want to go on the inside of each one of those strips. So just give them a one complete a circle. Yeah. You can actually cut it in half again, but you can just do it do the whole thing. All right. So at that point, basically you're We've got our pipe prepped with the foam. We've got our jackets prepped with the foam. Now we can just set it all up, make sure it's lined up, and then bolt on our uh, bottom hat. basically the bulk of our hardware set up. Now we're going to get into our thermocouples, get those attached properly. Sitting right there, we'll use that. Now let's see. Bad for swapping. Let's see where we're at here on that. One second. I should have checked that first. Sorry. Get that off there. We want to check our distance. We want to try and have our thermocouple equidistant from the jacket. We're basically going to go about about half inch. Wrap that tape all the way around the pipe. Oh, okay. We don't want that pulling loose. Right. All right. Let you guys do the one over here again. We're going about a half inch. I'm trying. I'm trying to This unit basically you just power it on. You're going to get one large display and one small one. So your T1 reading is 89.1. Our T2 reading right now is saying 86.5. T2 readings are, uh, you know, within a few degrees of each other. Nothing is completely out of whack there. Then we know we're okay with our with our readings. Theoretically, our thermocouple uh, for the control, which 
we're going to attach to the exhaust should be within a few degrees of that. Uh, the pipe wall is probably going to be a little bit cooler than the ambient uh, because it's got water in it. Uh, so now we'll go ahead and... Our best bet is get like a black water, green water, or black water, red water. Maybe we have a... I'm not sure. I don't think we have a tie rack here, so I'm going to grab one of those. Red, black, blue, whatever. Right. All right. Eliminate confusion. So what we're going to do with this one is we're going to give it a nice little hook at the end so that it can drop down into that into that exhaust and give us the reading we want without touching the wall. So we can go ahead and use the tie wrap. We're going to secure that to where this is basically you want it down inside the exhaust so that it's, you're trying to get it away from the ambient as much as possible, but without having it touch the pipe wall. So up. once we have it centered in there, okay. then you can tie wrap it. Okay, let me get a shot from the top. Show that thermal couple. All right, so that plugs into your power source, the controller does, and then this is gonna plug into our solenoid header assembly. Okay, so you see that we've got 85 degrees is our, our read on the control thermocouple, 89 and 85. So all of our temperature readings are within a few degrees of each other, that's what we want. That makes sense. And then this year, okay, so it's more nitrogen flow. And the first thing we'll do is we're going to have to give it a couple of minutes. Because when it, remember, when we first open this valve, odds are we're going to be shooting gas for a minute or two. We need to give it a couple of minutes until we're shooting liquid. And we need to check for leaks, make sure we don't have any leaking liquid nitrogen anywhere. Once we've checked for leaks, we know that everything's hooked up properly. Then we can go ahead and turn it over to the controls on the on the controller and we're, we're off. So basically, once you power up your digital controller, your top button, or the top reading in red is your thermocouple reading. That's the actual control thermocouple, the temperature that it's reading. The number in green is your set point. That's what you're programming that you, the, the controller, you want the pipe wall to go to that temperature. So right now, the standard factory setting is minus 40 degrees, but to change it, all you use are these up and down arrows so if you want to go colder, you just press the down arrow and it goes colder. You want to go warmer, you press the We're up arrow and it goes warmer. We're now at the point basically warmer. where um, we can take note of our start time. We can go ahead and uh, you know turn our open our, our valve on the liquid connection, start our flow of nitrogen, check for leaks, and then uh, and then we'll be off and running. So I'm just gonna go get our PPE and handle, handle all that. So basically, we're set up now, ready to go. Take note of the time. We got the phone here. Right Note our start time. 11.46. All right. 11.46 start time. We're going to open our liquid connection. Initiate the nitrogen flow. And delete the insert. Yep. That don't sound like 60 pounds of No. I can guarantee you it's not. Yeah, I heard it. 
So it's going to have a long cycle this time. Because we overshot, but it... it, it There's a little hand print quick. there. You see how it... It's got a hand. That's manual operation, so this is automated. So we have it warmed up to 20, it's shut. So now that we're already cycling at 40, we're going to dial it down. We're going to take it down to about minus 80 for now. Let it cycle there for a little bit. Yeah, it's good, but uh, there's nothing you can do. It's getting cold. You can dial it down a little further as things start getting colder. You know, you get it a little colder, but other than that, as long as that valve is that's not a loop. Yeah. That one you can spray it 10 feet away. Is that a mixture you guys have, Thomas? 